Hey guys, I'm Joel. In this video, I'm gonna be cutting the muffler off of my E30 because I've wanted to do this for so long. And now that my muffler fell off in the last DoorDash video, if you haven't seen it, I would highly suggest you go watch it. I was doing DoorDash and my muffler fell off. And it sounds really good now that it has no muffler, but the thing that has been scaring me is the exhaust is dumping before the gas tank and it's shooting a lot of flames and pops and stuff. In the back of my mind, I always have that if the gas tank leaks a tiny bit of fuel, it's gonna combust and just light on fire. That is not something that I wanna have hovering over my mind. So because of that, I wanna cut this pipe right there, put a V-band in, and then make another section so I can easily put the muffler back on or take the muffler off. What I have here is some three inch stainless piping. Let me open that real quick. I got this pipe off of Amazon, the Amazon special, <laughs> but it should work just fine. Yeah. Damn, that looks really good. When it's brand new, it's so clean. I have this exhaust tip that I've had for probably three years, but the problem is it's a two and a half inch because I got it when it, my car was NA. But now that this is a three inch, I wanna try and use an angle grinder to cut this down wherever it, it meets to three inch and then hammer the pipe on both ends to try and clamp it around and then I'll just weld around that and, and make my own three inch inlet exhaust tip. But. See, actually, I don't even have to cut that much off of it. I don't know, we'll see we can get on the road. And then I also got this V-band off of Amazon with two flanges on there, and that's what's gonna make this new piece removable. This clamp was the reason why my exhaust fell off. I guess this was a little too low when I mounted it, and it just completely ripped it off. I'm trying to bend it back open and see if I can use it, but I did buy a new clamp just in case, and I'll maybe just keep this one as a backup clamp, which it doesn't hurt to have. I think that actually kind of worked. Just clamping down on these two ends. Now it's it wiggles around and it, yeah, that definitely won't fall out. I'm gonna have to verify when it's in the car, but I should cut it closer towards over here instead of way back here, just so that I have less amount of pipe that I have to use. Let's put it in the car and see how it fits. Always give it a shake test before you go under It's pretty good. So as you can see, my exhaust is dumping right here, and this is the gas tank. So all the flames were just <laughs> right in that area. Not good. I also want to add more than just this one hanger. I only have one holding up this whole muffler back section, and it's just banging into my wheel well, which isn't the best. So I want to try and fix that. There we go. The exhaust is back on. I can decide where I want to cut it. I think I'm going to cut it right here after the diff and axles. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use a zip tie to mark exactly where I wanna cut it. But the good thing about the zip tie is it's gonna give me a nice straight line so I can cut it with the angle grinder because that's all I got. I just got one zip tie inside of the other. I need to see if that's gonna be visible. Yeah, it is gonna be visible. That's where I'm gonna cut it. It's gonna be right after the diff. Hopefully far enough in that it won't be too visible, the actual V-band. I'm gonna mark it with a sharpie just in case if the zip tie moves while I'm cutting it. Damn, that really is the best way to mark that because that line is perfectly straight. It met up right where it... I like that technique. Tape is not as good as zip ties. Here goes nothing. Damn, I've never cut a line so straight before. With just an angle grinder. In case if I mess it up, look at how straight it's going so far. <laughs> the zip tie is so clutch. Now that this pipe is all filed off and clean and cut down, I can install it and get the V-band just tacked in with the milgo other. 
Since I don't have a TIG welder, so I'm gonna have to bring this pipe to my dad's welding shop, use his TIG welder, and then bring it back here and hope and pray that it fits and works. I got the non-welded V-band on. Hopefully it's gonna be lining up straight and I can just weld it on with the V-band, not at an angle, because you can twist it a little bit to get some extra movement out of it, but hopefully I don't need that. Now that there's no hanger on it, it has so much movement. Yeah, I don't know what way I should try and go. I think more this way. Okay. <laughs> Already scratching up the brand new pipe. There's no way I can go straight on straight. Why does this look so stupid? I think I'm gonna have to weld it in with a slight upwards bend like this. And I can choose anywhere, what the fuck? Yeah, there's gonna be a slight bend to it. It's gonna look kinda wonky, but I don't really care. As long as the exhaust comes out right around here. I want this exhaust tip to come out a little bit past the rear bumper because it's previously the exhaust was coming out right here and it's destroying my chrome bumper. So I want it to come out a little far so that when I shoot the fireball, it's not leaving a whole bunch of residue on my paint too. It's always doing that. So a little further is kind of necessary here. Right about there is I think perfect. So this clamp is fully on this pipe. I had to hit it with a hammer to get it on. So I can confidently th say that that's gonna stay there. But now I gotta decide where I'm gonna cut this second pipe. I'm gonna hold the tip up. Ow! Slammed my thumb. <laughs> the pipe falling just overlies it a little bit, so it's kind of annoying. Now the problem is I don't really know exactly where this three inch tube is gonna meet into this two and a half inch tip. There we go, I got it marked. Once again, the zip tie trick. Coming in clutch. This is why this angle grinder is solely responsible for the amount of smell that you get inside of a shop and dirt and grime and all that. Just cutting one pipe left all those metal shavings behind. So I always be very cautious where all the sparks land because all those sparks is that. So don't do that towards car windows because it's literally just sending all those metal flakes straight to your car window and pitting the shit out of your windows. How does that look? I hope it looks pretty good. I don't know. You need to check the camera. I like to disconnect the car battery every time I weld just because I don't want to have anything short out in my electronics. I'm gonna go ahead and tack this first V-band on. I'm gonna do a little tack on the bottom as well. I have the two tacks on the both sides. That stops the V-band from moving side to side, but it can still move up and down. So now I need to do a third tack on the bottom to really lock it in place. There it is. Now since this V-band is tight, I'm gonna put the clamp on just to eliminate any movement in this whole apparatus. There we go. Now the only movement is gonna be in this pipe inside of the V-band and that's what I want because once I put the tack on there, there's gonna be no movement. Damn, that's gonna be super low. I need to, <laughs> I need to make sure that this is basically touching the rear valence section. That damn near. A little too far in the middle. It looks kind of stupid. Maybe even I'll do the E30 slant a little bit. Not too much. E30 slant is kind of like this. Like super crooked. But I'll pay homage to the stock E30 exhaust tip. That's where I'm going to try and get it to come out. It's going to be a mission. It's going to be cutting it very close just because there's a tiny gap on the bottom. As you can see, there's a little tiny gap right there. But when I push it, that way a little bit away from me it closes up so i'm going to try and push it and then tack it while it's closed and hope that the fitment isn't absolutely trash but we'll see
before I do one more tack. Uh, yeah, I guess that's where it's gonna have to sit. I have no choice now. <laughs> but it's not bad. It looks so empty down here. I need to do something about that. We will eventually. I'm gonna do one more tack so that it doesn't open up. Now let's see, will this stay? That should be good, four tacks on that. So I'm definitely gonna have to make some good exhaust hangers to hold the tip exactly where I want it to because the jacks are doing that for me. Now let's see. Yeah, it's settled a little bit, but that's to be expected. Two tacks on this side, and then the other two are on this side. So I can take both of these pieces off and go and get them fully welded. <laughs> that's a blast pipe, yo, look at that. <laughs> I have arrived to my dad's welding shop. I'm gonna be using that machine right there. A big boy TIG welder. So just gonna do these two beads on this pipe over here for the V-bands. And I brought the tip just to look at it. <laughs> I haven't TIG welded in so long, but this is the only reason why I know. After high school, I was always coming here doing all the tedious work, learning how to use an angle grinder, learning how to weld, and just getting my hands dirty. But they only have this thick stainless steel rod. <laughs> I have no idea how to set this machine either. I'm just gonna leave it exactly how it was and hope for the best. Let's see how this goes. Well, I'm gonna give it a few tacks, a few more tacks, and hope that it doesn't warp. V-bands love to warp if you put too much heat into them, so we're gonna just take it very slow. And the biggest thing with this is heat isn't determined by the amount of ampers that you put in it, it's mainly the amount of time you hold it there. If you hold it for a really long time, even if you're not giving it that many amps, it's gonna get really hot just because of how long you're doing it. So in my mind, I'm trying to just give it a lot of heat very quickly so I can just do the weld and be out of there as fast as possible. Here it is so far, before I continue, just because if there's gonna be any mistakes, now is when it's gonna happen. I was just trying to put a lot of little tacks all around so that I can try and prevent any warping, but here's that hole I said I put in there. I'm gonna try and fix that up. I'm gonna just put heat into the weld that's already on there because the weld is stronger than the material. If I tried putting heat into the material, it's just gonna make that hole way bigger, so I need to base off of the other weld that's already on there. Just like that, I filled that hole up. And it actually went very smoothly. I just focused the heat over there and then just fill the rod in only on the weld. And then you just start overlapping the hole and it does a pretty good job. Now, I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit just so that the heat can dissipate. Ooh, it's pretty hot right now. So the longer I take, hopefully the less it warps. I got it all welded. It's definitely not the nicest. There's a lot of stopping and going, but towards the end, I was realizing that if you start the weld right on the old weld, it looks pretty seamless, but maybe next time I'll be able to perfect it a little more, but it's all a practice thing. It's gonna do the job. Let's go back to my shop. Oh, and by the way, the welder was set to 80 amps, so it actually turned out to be very good. I also didn't even need to use any filler rod, but whatever. Damn, after seeing these in good lighting, it is so bad. <laughs> it's so inconsistent is mainly what you look for. It's kind of all over the place and just all around pretty ugly. So now keep an eye on how low the V-band is. <laughs> okay. It's not too bad actually. It's pretty low still, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna send it. I'm gonna try and get a bend on this hanger as soon as possible. I need this to be as long as possible, so I'm gonna try and do it right around here. Let's see what happens. It's getting red hot, holy shit, that's quick. Maybe I gotta take it out of the vise and vise it after it's already glowing. Then 
that actually worked out a whole lot better. <laughs> Outside of the vise first and then put it in the vise. This was the first hanger I did a few years ago and I bent it way too short and it literally cut half of the length that I could use. So bending it up top gave me way more range, which is what I need. When you put the hangers on, you wanna preload the bushing a little bit so that when you take the jack off, it doesn't just sag completely. But I don't know how much preload is too much. Cause it might be really hard to take the hanger off once both of them are in and super tight against each other. I don't know. We'll see though. <laughs> I'm gonna put it as tight as I can though, by hand, and I have the pipe touching here and on my subframe, so hopefully when I let go of the jack, it'll lower down a tiny little bit and be exactly where I need it to be. This is always the part that I dislike the most, but that's why I gotta do it more. It could go anywhere, that's the biggest thing. Yo, Ryan, I need your opinion real quick on the lining up of this exhaust. Is this good enough left and right? I feel like I'm trying to, like, there's hella movement. But I think like right there is where, compared to the tail lights, um, right there, I'm sending it. Okay, let's see how much the exhaust moves taking that jack off. This is just with one hanger, I'm gonna put one more on. Oh, that's pretty good. It moved down just a tiny, tiny little bit. Yeah. To be expected, now, okay, that is what I wanted to see. For this one, I'm gonna come to this side so that it could add some tension and pull the exhaust this way a little bit and hopefully that'll solidify it. I ideally would have rather had this hanger come to the opposite side of this pipe and then this hanger come to the opposite side of the pipe so they're kind of crisscrossing, but that hanger is just a little too far away from my exhaust, so that should do though. I don't know, I feel like that might be good. That's a pretty good bend. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna let it cool down for a little bit. It's a little high right here, so. Let's see. I think that's actually perfect. <laughs> I think that's literally perfect. That noise is it hitting on the subframe, so I'm about to hit that with the hammer. Okay, I'm gonna weld up the... Damn, now with those on, I only ever had one before, but now with that second one, it's very good. A lot more solid than when I had just the muffler, which I like. Now before taking that off, I do wanna put this exhaust tip on, but I'm gonna cut it right here so that there's no kind of restrictions. And I wanna make sure that no exhaust get trapped in here. I'd rather it just go straight in, in a nice smooth path. But it is gonna be sitting right about there. Inside of the pipe, it's kinda scuffed, but I think I can make it work. Here goes nothing. I'm gonna cut it right on that shoulder. I should probably check and see if that is good. <laughs> it's definitely going straight, but I just wanna make sure. Good thing I checked because this one was going straight, but since it's angled up a little bit, I gotta have at least that much material on the bottom. I think I could leave that inner piece in there. I don't really wanna try and get that out just cause it looks like it's, what the hell? Yeah, I'm not touching that. I'm leaving it, but that's a lot better. I mean, I guess it's the same thing. <laughs>
fucking welder. How does that look? Hey, I like that. Damn, the distance is perfect, I feel like. Ooh, I like that. Damn, it looks weird because it always had a black muffler and exhaust tips. I like that, I like it. Let me take that pipe off and, ooh, this thing's gonna be looking good with flames coming out of that. Now I gotta come in and fill those gaps in. I'm gonna do some relief cuts in the three inch pipe and hammer that in towards the exhaust tip and hopefully, I don't know how I'm gonna do that and keep this location the same though. I kinda messed up, there's a pretty good gap on this top part, but I could definitely fill it in with the weld. It's just kind of annoying and inconvenient. But the bottom has a way bigger gap, so I'm gonna do the relief cuts onto the bottom and then I'll figure out what to do with the top. I'm gonna just do two cuts. I don't know how deep to go on it, but is that enough? I don't know. Here goes nothing. I'm getting my gloves. I need my hearing protection. Holy shit! Let's see what happens there. I want to try and hammer that. I really don't want to hit the tip because I don't want to knock it out of alignment. Oh shit! It opened, that's exactly what I didn't want. Oh my god, it cracked right here on the weld. That's what I didn't want. From that hammering, it cracked it and opened up more. These gaps are absolutely huge. This one was my mistake. And this side was just kinda, I don't even know, a shit show. So I'm about to just MIG weld it all, not even try and TIG it. These gaps are ridiculous. This is gonna be a very fun gap to fill up. Sarcasm. It took way too long for me to realize that the machine was too hot and then that was the reason why I was blowing a hole every single time. It's welding so much easier now that I turned the heat down. Oh my god, changing the settings on the welder made such a difference. I was always so used to the flux core blowing a hole every single time, but I have gas on this welder. This is solid wire, not flux core. This is a hundred times easier now. <laughs> Damn, it looks like shit, but whatever. There we go, on this side is when I fixed the welder and turned the heat down. And then on this side, it kept blowing holes through like I was chasing my tail because the machine was too hot. I turned the wire speed up because I wanted to feed more material into it and it was at four and then I put it at two and it was way better now. Damn, it actually looks really good. I like it a lot. And then from the thumbnail angle, ooh, <laughs> this is just insane. I can't wait to hear it. Ryan, you wanna do the honors? Start it up? I gotta, I gotta see what this car sounds like. It should be good to start right away. You have the key? I don't know. No, it's in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what to expect. You ready up? Yeah. Oh, the battery's disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm over here jittering trying to hear what it sounds like. Alright, now let it go. Good, yeah, yeah, now we're good. <laughs> I need to hear what it's gonna sound like when I'm driving it. Oh, it should have gave it a one too. 
nah, 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 nah. <laughs> it's too cold. Fuck that. Yeah, yeah. I need to warm it up. Look at it. <laughs> Damn. Let me get this thing off the stand, yo. Damn. It looks, I love how I'm sitting right here and you can't see the pipe until you go like way down here because of that angle up right there. So like right here. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yo! <laughs> Obviously, I took a whole ass muffler off, but damn, I should have done this so long ago. I, I was going to do it right when the engine blew up, but then the engine blew up. So <laughs> I wanted to do this for a really long time and it's worth it. Sounds like one. My boy got an F1 car. I wish, yeah. I wish. Alright, 